let's have a look at the world of sport. And when it comes to cycling, there really is only one voice, the great Phil Liggett. And there is a new movie being released called Exactly That, The Voice of Cycling. We are delighted to say that he joins us now from London. Phil, hello to you. Well, hello. I'm not sure they say good morning or good evening, but so we'll go in the middle. How are you yeah. going on? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're all good. Well, tell, us, tell us more about the movie, because last time you and I chatted on, um, on Sky News, you actually had a film crew with you. They, they were with you for, what, a year or so? Yeah, 18 months. They, they got fed up of following me around, Tim. We went across three continents together. We went to North America. We went, uh, we went into Europe, of course, and we spent time in Australia. And South Africa, so cross off America. We didn't go there. <laughs> yeah, but we're having a look yeah. at we're having a look at some shots of your South African lodge <laughs> there. And usually, yes. you and Trish, apart from um, dotting around the world, we're watching her give you a haircut here as we look out on the river. But uh, you uh, have, <laughs> you, you know, you fall in love with that place. And also, we're seeing some shots of yourself from the early days with Paul Sherwin in commentary. So I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but uh, give us these kinds of observations. Well, I'll tell you, happy times, happy memories, and, and I'm a totally amazed that uh, the film crew, who, who actually wrote to me in uh, the December of 2018 and said, hey, uh, we'd like to make a film of your life, and I thought, well, is it going to stand up? But the film they've made knocked me out completely, and it has stood up. Sadly, during the filming, uh, Paul Sherwin passed away, my co-commentator, for 33 years, so I lost uh, my wingman and my best friend, as well as my co-commentator. Uh, and I learned the news at the house uh, in South Africa. But my life has been a very full one, Tim. Um, great memories and tragedy can't take your great memories away. And so I just love this film. And I just say a big thank you to the boys in Melbourne for what they did. Oh, I love your attitude and uh, your career just looks absolutely amazing. And I know you've spent plenty of time uh, with Tim Gilbert and uh, we're talking off camera about the, uh, <laughs> the pies. Tell us about uh, Tim's pies. Oh, uh, look, Tim, Tim did, I think it was seven years, Tim, you did uh, the tour down under with yes. both me and Paul Sherwin. We had a, a terrific time. It, life is life is to be enjoyed. Uh, we have a very tough job and you've got to be accurate in your work. But we had some fun times as well in between. And one of them, of course, was Paul Sherwin, new home base for every pie shop in South Australia. And when we were on the daily stages of the tour down under, uh, he would quickly drive to the pie shop that was on the route and we had to jump out the car, Paul did, grab the pies, throw them in the car and get away before the peloton rolled past. Uh, it was a lap a moment and Tim always paid. I must, uh, he probably expensed it, but he always paid for the pies. <laughs> and we always needed an extra dose of Zantac or Somac by the time we were on air <laughs> because we had to then talk all day. But, yeah, they were wonderful memories and that leads us to your connection with Australia because there really is... If, if you had three homes, it would be the UK, South Africa, Australia and, of course, on my four homes, you'd have to say France as well with the Tour de France. Now, Australia is my number one country, Tim. Um, I'm hopefully, this year we'll be doing the Olympic Games uh, for Australia, which I've done for many years now. Um, look, they made me the uh, Honorary Australian of the Year in 2019. I couldn't believe it. I said, hey, I'm British, you know, but they, they realised that. That's why I only got the honorary title. And I, just, I walk into the London Embassy and say, hi, guys, normally the security is so tight, and the security guy always says, we know who you are, just get in, which is really a great feeling to have because I just love working with Aussies. They're so straightforward, so down to earth, and they make the job a real pleasure. And that's all you can hope for when you're working really hard. You're seeing a picture of my, of my lovely little lodge there. It's not very big. It sits on about 20 acres of land, but there's no fences all the way to Mozambique. Lions walk in the bush there. I've never had my hair cut anywhere else other than by Trish, and I've had it cut in some very strange places around the world too, I'll tell you that. But I'll tell you, I look a lot older now, Tim. That's the only drawback, really, of the whole show. You're super fit, though. Just uh, love it. And your voice, you know, when we watch the, uh, the Tour de France, and, uh, you know, even if you're not into cycling, just to, to be able to witness the beautiful scenery and, and, and seeing all of the, you know, the peloton coming in through, uh, through the, um, uh, you know, to the winning line. To, yeah, I, I went that. there about 15 years ago, actually. Mm. It was absolutely 
incredible. Yeah, the mellifluous tones of Phil Liggett, of course. Uh, <laughs> yes. uh, now, you addressed the topic of Lance Armstrong in the movie. Um, yes. Feel, now, I know you did a lot of work through his charity. Did you feel dudded by him? Because there were a lot of lies told through that period of time. I felt absolutely sick uh, when, when it really came out after the Oprah show because the English press grilled me completely. Um, they think I'd taken drugs, never mind Lance. Um, and, that, you know, Lance, I, was, I wasn't ever employed by Lance, I was employed by the organiser of his gigs uh, to be his MC when he came and, and received money, of course, for going there. But the thing was that he, he brought a great deal of hope uh, to stage four cancer sufferers and, and really, really was tremendous when he did that. He raised $600 million, for goodness sake. Kevin Rudd came to the tour down under, and when I spoke to Mr Rudd, I said, why did you come here? It's only a bike race. He said, I came to see him. And he pointed at Lance Armstrong. That was the influence Lance Armstrong had. The bubble burst, of course, on the Oprah Winfrey show, and Lance uh, confessed to taking drugs, uh, and his seven tours were taken off him. Uh, but they were never given to the riders in second place. And that, to me, signals that the organisations probably thought that the, all the second-place riders probably were also on drugs. But that's by the by. Uh, the bubble of burst for Lance, and, and we haven't spoken since 2011, apart from a three-minute broadcast on a live interview in America, where we had no preamble before we went on air, so I don't count now. Well, it was a terrible period. It was a great period of my life. I loved every minute of it. I travelled the world to, make these, to do these unseen jobs. Australia, South Africa, America, mm. Canada, North America. But um, it was also a very, very sad time because I built this guy into a wonderful superstar, as he was, in my opinion, and then, bang, he, yep. he turned out to be a cheat. And I know when you say that he's a cheat, he really hates being called a cheat because he doesn't believe he ever was. Yeah, it's remarkable. It really is an extraordinary story. I could talk to you all day. I could sit down and eat pies with you all day. Uh, working with you <laughs> has been and hopefully will be a delight into the future. Phil Liggett, thanks for joining us and make sure um, you get out and watch the movie uh, The Voice of Cycling and uh, March 11 is the date it is released. Thanks, Phil.